Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back. My name is Chris Abbott, but all my friends just call me Abbo. And in this video, we're going to be specifically talking about why a healthy church is a growing church coming up. <laughs> Hey, what's up y'all? Welcome back. Super pumped to have you guys on the channel. If you're new here, we are constantly diving into church growth and social media and technology and innovation and finding new ways of reaching people with the timeless message of Jesus. So in this video, we specifically wanna explore the idea of a healthy church is a growing church. So I'm actually going to share with you a couple of principles that I think can lead to healthy, sustainable church growth. And then just some of the things I've learned over the last 20 years in ministry. So. Let's dive in. One of my favorite quotes of all time, and I'm a little bit obsessed with it right now, is James Clear from his book, Atomic Habits. Now he says that you don't rise to the level of your goals, you actually fall to the level of your systems, right? So if you're not happy with your church or your church growth or your attendance, right? The problem isn't you, the problem is your systems. Now I love this because the more that I've learned about church growth, the more that I've been in ministry over the years, right? What I've learned is is this is exactly right, right? What happens is for a little while when you first plant a church or you first take over a church and it's smaller, what happens is at the beginning, you can literally just kind of throw that sucker onto your back and on the force of your personality, you can grow it to a pretty decent size. But eventually you get to the point where it begs for structure, right? Eventually what happens is you need systems in order to grow. So a lot of times that's gonna be somewhere around the 100 to 150 mark, right? But definitely to break through 200, you're going to have to have systems and definitely to break through the church growth barriers of 400, 800, 1000, right? You have to have systems. And so understanding that depending on where you're at in your journey right now and the size of your church, right? You may or may not be able to do everything yourself, but there is a day coming and it's probably sooner rather than later where your church is going to need systems in order to grow. So there's actually something called Dunbar's number and this is in social psychology, right? That says that, you know, we can successfully manage about 150 relationships but anything more than that and things begin to implode, right? And people begin to fall off. And so a really talented leader might be able to even manage, you know, 175, maybe 180 relationships, but anything more than that, right? And people are gonna begin to fall off. It's just not possible to maintain that many social relationships. This is why the 200 barrier is so tough. It's because at that point, the church is big enough that you can't continue to know absolutely everybody and maintain those relationships. You can't constantly check in in with everybody every single week and remember everybody's name and their birthdays and what they're going through and who's having what surgery and who's getting married and all the funerals, right? All the pastoral care becomes really, really hard to keep up with. And that's why around the 150 mark, you're gonna have to transition into more of a coach and you're gonna have to pour into your leaders and actually raise up leaders and those leaders will continue to take care of your congregation. So this is the only way to break through 200 and become scalable without working a million hours a week and then eventually burning out. All right, so let's take a look at some of the things that healthy churches do in order to become a healthy growing church. All right, number one, steal like an artist. Okay, now there is a great book by this title. If you haven't read it, I definitely recommend it. But the one caveat I will say, right? Steal like an artist. Right? Nothing is original. So the best thing that you can do is take a look at what other churches are doing. Take a look at what other brands are doing. Take a look at Disney and Starbucks and Tesla and Harley Davidson, right? And Apple, right? And see what they're doing and how they're communicating and then steal like an artist. Now, the important caveat is don't steal like a thief, right? Thieves just literally steal other people's stuff. Don't steal like a thief, steal like an artist. I think it was actually Picasso who said, good artists copy, great artists steal. Right? And so you don't want to copy what other people are doing. You want to steal from them, which means you take a look at maybe the sermon series they're doing, where you take a look at their social media posts, where you take a look at some of the copy that they're using on their website, how they're communicating some of the events that they're doing, right? And then you steal those ideas, you make it your own, and you come up with something that's completely original, but was based on the idea that you stole from someone else, right? So does that make sense? We're not copying, right? You don't want to just go out there and do a Google search for marriage series, and then you're like, ooh, this one, I want a new marriage. I like like that and then you just copy paste it and use it for your church, that's literally stealing, right? It's also illegal uh, and unethical, right? So you don't want to copy what they're doing and take other people's, but you want to steal from those ideas. You want to borrow from them. You want to make them your own. And then you want to put out something that's brand new. All right. Number two, dream dangerously. 
Now, I love this and I came up with this based on uh, one of my favorite authors, Mark Batterson, and a quote that he has that says, Jesus didn't die to make us safe, he died to make us dangerous. Right? Ooh, I don't know about you, man, that, 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 that gets me fired up. I love Batterson, I've read all his books, they're phenomenal, right? So, man, Jesus didn't die to keep us safe, he died to make us dangerous. And so, man, I wanna ask you like right now, like what are you dreaming dangerously about? Right? If a healthy church is a growing church, you want to grow your church, what kind of impact do you want to have? What kind of influence do you want to have? How do you want to change your city? There's a story of A.W. Milne that Mark Batterson talks about in his book, All In. Right? So they used to have these things they called one-way missionaries. These were missionaries that went to the missions field and they knew that they wouldn't be coming back. Right? They bought one-way tickets to the missions field and instead of packing all their stuff into a suitcase, they packed all their belongings into a coffin because literally they knew that wherever they were going, they would probably be killed for the gospel and they would be shipped back in their own coffin that they packed. Right? That's hardcore. I don't know if you've done anything like that lately. Right? I certainly haven't. So A.W. Milne was actually one of those. He set sail for uh, an island in the Pacific called the New Hebrides. And so he packed his coffin and he knew that when he got there, right, every single missionary that had gone before him had been killed by the headhunters there. Right? So he knew he was walking into pretty much certain death. Right, but it was absolutely incredible. What happened is instead, he actually found the tribe was open to the gospel and he lived among them for 30 years. In fact, when he died, they buried him in the middle of the village and his tombstone said, when he came, there was no light. When he left, there was no darkness. Man, I don't know about you, but that's the kind of things I want people to write on my tombstone. Right? So what kind of increase and in impact do you want to have in your city? Are people in your city, you know, going to say, oh my gosh, man, when he came, there was no light, but when he left, there was no darkness. Those are the types of goals that I believe we as Christians should have in order to be able to change our city, right? So we have to dream dangerously. What are some of the things that you want to do that are so big, so huge, so outrageous that if you said them out loud, most people would laugh, right? I believe those big, huge, fat dreams like that, that's what honors God. So dream dangerously. All right, so before I get to my last couple of points, make sure to subscribe to this channel and hit the little notification bell. That way you get notified every single time we drop a new video. All right, number three, learn the language of social media. Now, it was Tom Rainer that is famous for saying that not learning how to use social media effectively is like a missionary moving to a country and refusing to learn the language. Ouch, right? That's a little bit convicting. But I love it. Not learning how to use social media effectively is like a missionary moving to a country and refusing to learn the language. So one of the things that we have to do as a healthy, growing church is we have to learn the language of social media. And so I think the best way to do this is to pick a little bit every single day and to just start to study it, right? Study social media marketing, study what to post on Facebook, what to post on Instagram, right? There's a lot of great tutorial videos. We've got several videos here on this channel on specifically how to use Facebook ads, how to use Facebook stories, Instagram stories, how to set up ads and landing pages. And we've even got step-by-step walkthrough videos on exactly what to post on your Facebook page. So just make it a goal to maybe do one video a day, right? To learn something new every single day, because 12 months from now, you're not even going to recognize your social media. If you've gone in every single day and just learned a little bit more, I'm telling you, you're going to be able to attract new visitors and you have new families pouring in the front door because you took time just a little bit every single day to learn something new. Learn the language of social media. Number four, if it doesn't exist, create it, right? I love this. This is something that entrepreneurs kind of naturally do, right? Peter Thiel has an incredible book called Zero to One, where he talks about the role of entrepreneurs is that we have to take the world from zero to one. We don't take the world from one to two, meaning it already exists and we're gonna go create another thing and now there's two of them instead of one, right? And, and we're not gonna go create something better. We're gonna create something that doesn't exist. And I believe every single one of us as church leaders and pastors, right, we have something on the inside of us that is finding those opportunities. And where you see something like that, that's probably the Holy Spirit pointing out that hole. And if it doesn't exist, create it. So we did this in my church, right? One of the things that we realized was missing in our community was a food bank that was not only providing food, but also a church service for people and feeding them spiritually because we didn't want people to just get fed physically, but we also wanted them to be able to be fed spiritually, right? So there are a couple of food banks around town and they're doing a pretty decent job. But what we wanted to do is we wanted to create a food pantry where people could come out and they could experience service. They could have people pray with them. They could hear a relevant word for their situation 
situation and listen to some great worship, right? And that's exactly what we did. So we created Friday groceries and now every single Friday between 400 and 700 bags of groceries goes out to families in need all around the area. And while they're waiting in line, we literally have a church service for them and we give people a chance to get prayer and to accept the gospel every single Friday. So if it doesn't exist, created. All right, so we talked about social media a little bit in this video and we've got tons of videos on this, but if you're looking specifically for a strategy or a step-by-step -step framework on how to use social media and technology to attract new visitors and get a steady stream of new guests every single Sunday, then head on over to churchgrowthagency.com or simply click on the link in the description below and you can check out the free video we have there. And if you'd like, we'd even be happy to hop on a free strategy call and talk about how you can set up a system like this for your church.